Major League Gaming 2009 PC Circuit played on HP Live in Anaheim. I'm Keith Igo Crahan, joined by Jared B. Hell Colston as we're going to get right into the action between SKUS and Button Bashers. Stretch match time. And the first round, we're going to bring it to you right away, and it is going to be on Ruins of Lord or on this RMP Mirror. So far in this tournament, SKUS struggling as a team, but on the other side of things, Button Bashers complete opposite. 3 in 0 at this tournament. Now, SK has a uh, enforcer, but look at his gear. A little bit different choice. You know, in the past couple matches, he's been playing with uh, 120 energy. So, I, you know, he knows that any target on his team can be killed. And you look on the other side at Heron, 120 energy, so opting for a little less PvP gear. We'll see how it plays out, but so far, I'm so impressed with this team of Button Bashers. I can't say it enough. Some of the things they've done in these games is pretty much unbelievable. So let's go ahead. We'll follow here and out of the gates. He, had, he is replacing Hannibal for Button Bashers in this tournament and has pretty much done an amazing job. Once again, mounting and not sprinting, taking his time and being patient. In comes Pooks, already going to start this game out. And now you see him over on the other side. Thanks, here and will sprint. He's actually going to grow Pooks. So a little bit of a different opener. 9,000 HP Pooks getting very low. And they, we do see reels into a poly. So there is that block onto Pooks. And no master spell coming across. So they're going to let him sit it. And while wow, here and will get popped out of that vanish. Number one taking a lot of damage right now. Now down to 9,000 hit points. And uh, he's in trouble right now. Got to pick himself up. But no defensive cooldowns used yet. And you see him go to the other side of the sarcophagus, going to pin it and pick himself up to full. Another poly onto reels, and now Enforcer actually going to get the re-stealth off and go over and open onto Heron. So Heron under pressure now into that kidney shot, dropping to around 16,000 HP, but in comes that penance from number one. Enforcer was in a deep freeze right there, but the rogues are doing their normal rogue duel, attacking each other. And, uh, no, here we go. Poly onto reels. They can make something happen right here. Enforcer with evasion up just fell. And now you do see that rupture on Enforcer, so he will not be able to get that reset off. And now a blind onto Reels after that poly. And you see Orange swap the poly over to Pooks, who Pooks will immediately block it. Still hearing down to around 13,000 HP, getting a little low. But Enforcer in a lot of trouble here. 7,400 kidney and deep freeze at the same time. So a little miscue from Button Bashers. But still Enforcer getting very low. And also, so is Heron. 4,600 HP on Enforcer, and down goes Enforcer. And you hear that little bit of yelling coming out from Button Bashers as they just know whenever they're going to get that kill. And that was a great round. It showed the strength of both rogues right there. We had Enforcer on the screen for a little while. He was trying to get away from that Shadow Fiend, trying to get a re-stealth off, but uh, Orange Marmalade found him, noved and him, and they dropped him. And actually take a quick look at the rounds. Book's doing 59,000 versus Orange Marmalade. It's 24k, but on the other side, Enforcer 34,000, and Heron doing 54k. And also, we don't have number one being that third DPS on the team in this matchup, taking a little more defensive approach to this game. So that is going to make it 1-0 button bashers, and these teams are going to jump right back in since it is after the first game, so they can't change anything. So queuing right back up. And on your screen right now, on the left side, that of course being Button Bashers, number one, Orange Marmalade, and here and down at the end, SKUS on the right, Enforcer, Pooks, and Reels. All right, so this is going to be in the sewers this time, Dalaran Arena. And uh, I know all these are, a lot of teams have been having problems with this map, especially the, uh, the line of sight on the boxes and... Um, we were talking about Death Knights being able to grip people down and how it makes a huge play difference. And, uh, but they don't have to worry about Death Knights, Warlocks, anything like that. Just the good old classic RMP mirror. And really uh, comparing everyone else in the teams, you can look at it and see the stats are almost exactly the same. Now, Orange Marmalade already mounting up. He does have uh, actually Mana Shield up as well. And we'll have to see exactly how Pooks is going to go to start this game. We've seen him be very aggressive in the beginning as Heron has still, they opted to open on, in, onto him in that last game, starting out with the Garot and trying to get some pressure going as Pooks was very aggressive. He was on their side of the sarcophagus and still throughout that game, they just continued that momentum and took that first round, and which was pretty smooth throughout. Heron getting pretty low throughout it, but we've seen here he knows when to pull back and when to go back into the fight. So let's do this. Game two, SKU. US and Button Bashers. Here we go. Pooks out in the middle. 
and get actually going to pop here. And so a little bit of a rocky start for the team of Button Bashers and Enforcers going to take advantage and get that cheap shot off. We do see an early CS on a number one. Now there's a deep freeze on the here and a little bit of damage coming in from Pooks. But Orange is going to get the poly off first. Pooks' is trinket already used and that poly will be full locked. So great job by Orange Marmalade already in this game. He will get out of there and get his vantage off. And now we see I fear and Polly under Reels as Enforcer's taking a good bit of damage. Reels is going to have to take it that and pick Enforcer up. Huron is still the target of this team of SKUS. They're going straight on him, although we do have a big sheep on the Reels. He's out of it now um, with number one trying to keep Enforcer out of stealth. Now one thing to watch for is once that DR on Polly comes up, Four reels, you can expect them to go for him, and pain suppression's already been used. And now we see another poly on the reels. This is when things start to get scary for both teams. Orange Pond, no poly now. Big fear on the here, and he's going to go ahead and break that. But Enforcer down to 10,000 HP. There's that fear on the reels, and you even see number one put a little damage in. In comes a pennant, so. But Enforcer still caught into that candy shot, dropping on the 8,000 HP, treating a little late. A lot of damage coming in. 831 HP getting picked up. There's a CS on the reels. You hear the team of Button Bashers calling for the kill and down goes Enforcer. Two rounds played and two rounds for Button Bashers showing that they are b here at this tournament to win it all. Look at the amount of healing that number one had. I mean, Reel spent most of the fight in a sheep. And that's, I mean, look at the difference. He doubled his healing. <laughs> Enforcer the one to go down. Damage received 60 thousand damage on the other side here I'm receiving 40k and still once again Pook's actually out damaging orange marmalade but it still doesn't matter because it's not ever at those prime moments I mean here it just seems like he's comfortable and knows when number one has his back All right to two zero button bashers I mean, these guys have faced each other a number of times so far and you see all six players still seated at their PCs and honestly, I don't see either team changing their comms, uh, specifically button bashers. But here we go. SKUS going to do what they're known for, stand up and talk things through. Reels must have something ready. I hope he does. Well, whatever it is, I don't think Pooks is going to be a part of it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, there he goes. And that is definitely not the team of SKUS we're used to seeing. Uh, when they were on top, confident. All the way through these, uh, all the way through any games they played. Specifically, going back to Columbus taking that first place spot over the team known as EMG then and Check Six now. Yeah, it's. I mean, that slight change to resilience really, uh, you know, it took the spirits out of the team. Basically, even coming into the events, they they didn't look the same in uh, Dallas at all. So if you've missed any of the WoW action from over the weekend, make sure you go check it out at gotfrag.com where we also have the Ask the Cast thread underneath the WoW general discussion forums where we'll be pulling questions from all throughout the weekend and Jared and I will try to answer those. Also, mlgpro.com and mmo-champion.com. So they do have a few minutes right now to uh, discuss what's going on. Um, not only that, they can choose to make some spec changes, you know, class changes, comp changes, anything they need to. Um, but I have a feeling these teams are going to stick to their guns. Now, going to the, uh, the Ask the Cast there, we are at question number 1,200 from Calvin, and just to kind of generalize what he's talking about, he's trying to see, do we think there is a counter to the Beast Rush setup that Check 6 is currently running? And one of the things he rec he's actually bringing up is a double healer setup, and the one he recommends, Priest Druid Rogue. Now, here's the thing, whenever you run double healer comps against something with so much pressure like Check 6, is still even with two healers they're still going to put out that momentum and you're looking at hex and hoj is a major forms of cc now you play with a druid and a priest basically what's going to happen is is they're going to time together hex and hoj hoj the druid hex the priest so every, every time hex is up they're going to go for that combo and on that second one you will not have trinket and you if they make it to that point in the game it's going to be rough and whenever you only have a single dps to try to put someone down you look at Toes, he's not going to have to burn through very many cooldowns to keep up whoever that rogue decides to go on. And in the entire time, you can expect there to be a trap down and that rogue having a tough time staying on whatever he wants to stay on. And honestly, I would picture both the Hunter and the Enhancement Shaman staying on top of that rogue and just DPSing through his cooldowns because all it takes is just for a little bit of damage to go through, a little dice roll as far as evasion goes, and literally that rogue can spike from 100 to nothing in just a matter of seconds. Yeah, and you know, a bunch of people were talking about possibly you know some odd comp like a double warrior you know paladin you know something like that where the plate can actually live through but we just saw them eat through a 
Death Knight. That's the second time we've seen them do that. Actually, in Dallas against Existence, they did the same thing, brought out the armor pin, changed up their gear a little bit, and they just train a play class down from start to finish, and it's still too much damage for people to keep up with. It's kind of funny that Check 6, their abbreviation is the exact same as Existence, and they beat them last tournament. <laughs> And uh, going to 12.03, a great question, actually. With the last two tournaments, we're seeing a pattern of the non-RMP comps being close to or in the top four, even as far as other comps winning and RMPs basically getting shut out. With the dominance of these other comps, why are we still seeing more than half of the tournaments built up with RMPs? It's just these existing teams that have done well in the past. And, I mean, sometimes you, uh, sometimes you can't exactly um, base everything on a, a tournament performance you know the guys could have had just an off weekend not playing well together something like that but uh you know if an rmp is kind of down and out there's always a possibility of them springing back look at button bashers this weekend all right looks like these players are ready to get back into the arena this is skus versus button bashers going into game three with button bashers having a clear lead of 2-0 all right, this is going to be on Blade's Edge. Top left is going to be SK Gaming starting with Pooks. And then you're going to have Reels and, of course, Enforcer being the rogue on the team. Top right going to be your team of Button Bashers with number one, the Priest, top right. Next, Orange Marmalade, the Mage. And, of course, the new rogue, Iron. And he's been doing fantastic so far. And still looking at both of these teams, not really anything changing up as far as individual gear or specs for either of these teams. So they seem confident in their play, but SKUS really, ha I mean, they're forced to at this point. They need to bounce back or the series is going to be over before it even started. So, I mean, these games have been so quick from the start, even though Button Bashers has been doing a great job of stringing games out, getting late kills when they all focus on a target. So, you know, it, SKUS has to make something happen quickly. I wonder how intimidating it is whenever you hear the Koreans yell. I mean, these players are sitting pretty close to each other, and you know what's coming whenever they're The only they time they excited. yell is, yeah, is when they're all going for a kill. So you know that if number one's in line of sight when you hear him yelling, <laughs> he's going to kill somebody with them. All right, gates have opened. Game three between SKUS and Button Bashers. Once again, the difference in play style. Enforcer already sprinted, bouncing back and forth, and here and taking his time. Now he's going in, and actually both rogues are going to step right by one another. And now we see actually Enforcer's going to come in. We have a double sap. Hiran's going to sap reels, and then we see uh, on the other side of things, number one being sapped. But look at this, a kidney shot with a poly on the number one and a defreeze on the Hiran. So it looks like they're going to try to DPS through Hiran, and he's just kind of bouncing back, trying to get out of the way of this action. And now he's putting a little bit of damage onto Enforcer, but still it kind of feels like Button Bashers is on the defensive so far. So uh, we just had number one dropping back to try to fear uh, Reels, who willed out of it. And that was actually a big fear by uh, Reels. But again, that will have forsaken from the entire team, broke him out. Iron's taking a, a little bit of damage right now. You know, he is doing the normal rogue duel. Deep frozen, uh, frozen right now by Orange Marmalade. And now we see Orange Marmalade actually being controlled a good bit. And you see him using that Arcane Blast when his Frost Line is locked out. Now number one caught into that poly, but Enforcer dismantled during this. And Heron sees that, and he's going to go ahead and jump off and vanish and get out of there. Now let's see what he does with his opener here. It's going to be on Enforcer. 18,000 HP, sure to follow. And there's that pain suppression from Reels. He knows the damage is coming into Enforcer. So cooldowns being used by both teams. And Heron says, I'm out of here. I know I'm not going to get a kill here. Let's see if he's able to get this restealth off. And he is. Things not looking good. And he's actually going to get popped. Great job by Pooks. Now, uh, Enforcer is up top right now, trying to get on Orange Marmalade, but he's just not having any luck right there. And Enforcer forced uh, actually Trinket that deep freeze, and you see those full line of dots from actually number one and a Holy Fire, but look to here and down to 5,000 HP. A lot of damage, 1,600. A CS on to number one, and down goes Heron. So whatever it is that SKUS talked about, it seems to have worked. SKUS bringing a match back in their favor and dropping here. They're doing a great job of controlling number one from the beginning. You know, he sat in that poly for a long time, even while he had PI up on himself. It was really a turning point when Heron got that restealth off. Coming up the ramp, great job by Pooks to get the pop because things would have been very bad at that point. Uh, Enforcer's trinket was down, pain suppression already used. All right, so look at the damage number. It's a huge difference. You can tell that this button basher team wasn't going on the offensive from the start like they normally do. SK Gaming kind of swapped it a bit, and uh, it worked. 
So you see it, these players are going to stay seated. This is going to be going into game four between these two teams, and they will not have the opportunity to really change anything up only after the second and fourth game. So SKU has got to be feeling a little better now, but they still have to continue that momentum. They cannot lose another round if they want to try to win a series. So every round does count. Uh, especially for a team like uh, SK, which hasn't had too much success so far at this tournament um, in terms of each individual match. So they need to win anything they can. If they hope to get in that top four for Sunday, which is what everyone is vying for in the round robin portion of this tournament. But let's go into game four. It's going to be played on the Grand Arena and still at RMP Mirror in the Grand Arena pretty much an open area and they expect for them to try to fight for control around the pillar where the fight does start. And again, looking over it, Pook's doing a great job that match, not only with that pop onto Hiran, but also controlling Orange Marmalade. He, it really turned around in that game just from the simple fact uh, we're used to seeing Orange really dominate in that mage on mage mirror in these RMP setups. And I mean, Pook's doing such a great job this time. I know these guys are good friends. We saw them playing twos together a little while ago, um, but they, uh, yeah, I mean, they must know each other's play style by watching watching them play so well and talking to each other all the time. All right, gates about to open. SKUS bringing it back with that one round, but it's still 2-1 in the favor of Button Bashers. All they need is that one more win, but still don't count SKUS out, especially in such a heated series. So out of the gates, we are going to follow Pooks to see what he can do to handle Orange Marmalade. And pretty much, a, again, this is similar setups, exactly the same comment. Looking at the tier, almost everything is identical. But once again, hearing Optin to take that slow start. And actually, uh, Enforcer doing the same thing. Now hearing taking out that middle approach, while Enforcer's going to take that far side out and just kind of wait things out. And hearing just kind of staying back and forth. I think they're a little timid after losing that last round. All right, Pook's in the center right now, um, trying to find his target that he wants. And there he goes, going to be... Uh, put into combat by Orange Marmalade. We do have a sap on the number one though, and there's the opener onto Orange Marmalade. Here and sees that, and he's going to go ahead and come across. Now there's a deep freeze onto Enforcer. Wow, great poly from Pooks, and now we see a cheap shot Enforcer, but still not a lot of damage coming out. We do have a sheep onto Pooks. He's going to go ahead and sit through that, and they're finally going to get that dispel. And it looks like they're actually going to go over and try to get some damage onto Pooks at this point. But here and being opened up on by Enforcer. Now Orange going to have to go ahead and do that arcane blast. And look at that, his frost line is going to get locked. So no damage coming out from Orange just yet. Trying to come back with a poly afterwards and not really doing much just yet. So not a lot of damage coming out from either team. But here's that holy fire from number one onto Enforcer. And now a pain suppression comes out very early in this game. So Enforcer is going to be the target of this Button Bashers team. They've been doing a lot of um, he's stuck in a Nova, as you can see. Wow, and there Hiran gets a re-stealth off, comes back around, goes onto Enforcer, and still the mana put damage into Enforcer with Hiran is going to be number one. Now looking at mana, number one far behind compared to Reels at this point. So if this match drags out to a very long game, it could look bad for Button Bashers. Uh, Reels was actually just frozen and used his trinket and then got polyed right after, so great job by uh, Orange Marmalade right there. Big fear coming across from Reels, hitting both Orange Marmalade and number one, and then a poly immediately after. He's going to go ahead and trinket that as Heron's in a little bit of trouble. In comes Enforcer, gets that cheap shot off, but number one actually able to knock him off before that. And now we see Orange Marmalade and Hooks both du duking it out, trying to take control of this game. But Heron down to 2,000 HP, and down goes Heron. SKUS is going to turn this back around after being down 2-0 and bring it back and tie it up. And that's what they need to do. Maybe this is a big momentum shift for uh, SKUS. And uh, they did a great job. I mean, Real was crowd controlled most of that time, but Hooks uh, was playing like a champion. I mean, the name of the game after coming back from that little break that SKUS uh, took to talk it over, I mean, really, Pooks has stepped it up, not only in the damage department, but also controlling the game. It really has. Looking at the damage, obviously, SKUS was in the arena a little bit longer with a full team, so their dam damage numbers are going to be a bit higher, but uh, number one did a ton of healing that time. 117,000. And now we are... And after four games, these teams will have the opportunity to talk it over once again. So you do see Enforcer standing up. Uh, you can assume that both teams have a little bit to talk about after it now. 
<laughs> Button Bashers looking to clearly dominate the series and then coming back after that small break and losing two rounds to SKUS. And look at them. I mean, they're <laughs> kind of down about it. <laughs> pretty quiet so far. We haven't heard them yelling and screaming when they were going for a kill quite yet, except for that first round. And now Enforcer, actually the only one standing up from SKUS, so maybe going to get this started right away. Uh, they've got to be feeling pretty confident with that little changeup, and really, uh, we keep saying it, Pooks is shining in those last two games. Yeah, he was. I mean, the uh, RMP mirrors can be all about, you know, which mage is better. And uh, Pooks showing that he can hang with Orange Marmalade. So we do have a couple minutes here while we wait for these two teams to give the go-ahead and queue back up. So we'll go back to the Ask the Cast thread on gotfrag.com on the WoW General Discussion forums and just go through a few of the questions. And a big thank you to everyone out there that's been participating, especially a lot of the Europeans that have been staying up very late and watching all the games. And uh, going down to 12-12, actually a question about live right now. What do you think is the strongest comp currently on live? It's, uh, tons of people are, it's whatever anyone complains about. Like that's the big thing. So just look at what people complain about. And the uh, double caster setups are just crazy right now. In life. It really depends who you ask and what comp you're running personally. It, every team is having problems with other teams. I don't think really there's one team out there that's just completely dominant as far as live goes. Oh, looks like we are going to be going back into the fifth mat, fifth round of this match. Uh, it's going to be on Runes of Lordaeron this time. So currently it's tied 2-2 for SKUS and Button Bashers. So after being clearly in the lead 2-0 and Button Bashers gonna sweep this series, SKUS comes back and wins two rounds and it basically able to fix what was broken. Now on the side of Button Bashers, who were kind of quiet after that little break, do you think that they can turn it around and do the same? I think they can. It's, uh, I don't think they're too intimidating, intimidated right now. Um, you know, maybe if they win or if they lose this round, might be a different story. But um, yeah, it's you can never count this team out. All right, SKUS on the left, Button Bashers on the right. Ruins of Lordaeron to decide this series, and as we've seen in the past, it generally comes down to the wire between these two teams. We're going to be following uh, here and out of the gate to see if he can handle Enforcer with the opener. And uh, Ruins a Lordaeron, so, you know, we've always, we've seen here and every single time he doesn't sprint right out of the gate like some rogues do. You know, it takes his time getting to the tomb in the center. I'm curious to see what Real said in that little talk. Yeah. Because whatever it is, it seems to work. Maybe just pump Pooks up a little bit and ship him an energy drink or something. Maybe that's just what he needed. And once again here, and just going to stay mounted. We see him take his time with these openers. Going to slowly come in. And now, and now you see Pooks flying in over the sarcophagus. He says, I'm going to get things started. Garode on a Pooks instantly has to block. Not a good opener for SKUS. Pooks already out of that block. 11,000 HP. And Reels caught into that poly. He's going to have to come across 7,500 HP. Pooks in a very bad position here. And is in that deep freeze coming out of that. And now comes in a few heals. But once again, Reels uh, actually going to shadow with death that poly. It comes to blind. Pooks in a lot of trouble at this point. Here in sound to half. And that's one. it. Pooks too aggressive over the sarcophagus. Here in sees it takes full advantage of it. And just like that, SKUS looking to come back after a 2-0 deficit, but just not enough. And the, actually, Button Bashers will win it 3-2 over SKUS. And I mean, just take a look at the damage. It it really doesn't matter. It was clear as day what happened. Pooks getting aggressive, coming over the sarcophagus, and hearing what hearing waiting patiently said, okay. I'll come in, we'll get him, uh, we'll garrote. And it, literally, he had to instantly block because Orange Marmalade already had Reels into a poly. Great job by Reels on Shadow Ware deathing that poly, but it didn't really matter because Heron still had his blind up afterwards, just leaving Pooks in a world of trouble. So that will conclude the series with Button Bashers winning it 3 2, continuing their winning streak. I believe they're 4 0 overall at this point. And I'm pretty sure we're going to see Button Bashers on Sunday in that top four. Oh, we will. So we do have plenty of wild action to continue on with. And after, uh, we will have BHMS versus EG coming up, followed by Check 6 versus SKEU. A bunch of big games still to play today, but we're going to take a short break before we come back. And we'll be live here in Anaheim with the Major League Gaming 2009 PC Circuit played on HP.